What's going on YouTube? Out here working on my truck, so I figured I would just make a video about it. As you can see, we've got the tire off here, all jacked up. Got a jack stand there for extra support, which is not exactly on the axle there, but in case the jack fails, it will be there. Just not enough room for the tire clearance. Um, but yeah, so as you can see, look at the this rotor here. It is all scraped up because if you know what you're looking at right here, that's my brake pad and there's no pad left. It's just metal to metal. Well, how could you let this happen? Well, it's a funny story. Um, actually, I had to replace this rotor um, and then I had to replace the, yeah, this rotor that's all messed up. It looks like it needs replaced again. Although, when you run your fingernail across here, it doesn't feel like... Uh, like there's any ridges or anything so we might be okay i'll look at it after i get the new brake pads on and wear them in a little bit but uh story with this one i had a rear caliper lock up on me right after i replaced the rotor and uh, put brand new brakes on it so i drove i don't know probably 20 miles or something like that with a locked up caliper before i realized and hit it with a temperature probe and everything and found this was the wheel and, just assumed it was the caliper locked up, came all the way back home, and uh, or maybe it was 20 miles round trip, I don't know. But whatever, it had that much wear on there, and then I had to replace that caliper. So, that brake pad was worn down, and the other side's fine, but this side is already metal to metal because of that little bit of loss. Doesn't excuse the fact that I probably should have caught this a little earlier, but eh, whatever, what are you going to do? So, um, since I don't really like to do tutorials, I'm not going to tell you how to change your brakes but I'm going to do it and I'm going to show you how simple it is because it is super super easy um, surprised the heck out of my brother-in-law when I showed him how easy it is but I've even got my little manual over here my Chilton's manual not that I need it but I was just actually looking and right here in this section the very beginning of doing your brakes usually it says uh, remove the negative terminal off the battery and it does not this is the first book I've had that didn't say that for the brakes which is really weird um, I, it was weird in the first place. I don't know why you need to take out your negative terminal, but maybe it's something to do with the electronic. Uh, the front has, this is a rear brake, by the way. Um, obviously the leaf springs there. But uh, yeah, if you have disc brakes, pretty much it's the exact same way either way. So I guess we'll just get started. Like I said, I popped the lugs off there, pulled the tire off. Um, one handy tip is wear gloves. Uh, pretty much when you work on your vehicle at all, they are so freaking dirty. And I don't know about you, but it just bugs the... Cr I mean, I already have dirt on my hands. It's driving me nuts, even though I was wearing the gloves. But uh, I hate when you get that dirt on your hands, especially under the fingernails, and you can't get it out for, like, weeks. Ugh, so that's horrible. Got my C-clamp here, trusty little C-clamp. So we're just going to get started on here. Like I said, we jacked it up. It is safe. I've got uh, blocks in front of the front wheels. Wheel. Um, so it shouldn't rock forward nor backwards, even though my jack is uh, firmly wedged into the sand here. But uh, it's thick enough sand with a little bit of grass, so it'll hold. Anyway, come up here and we get in the back. You'll see right there, there's the nut right there. That one right there. And there's one. See how it's got the little spongy little, uh, looking little dealies there? And there's another one right here on the bottom. So those are the only two bolts that hold this caliper onto the vehicle. So we'll go ahead and take those out. And then, I guess I might as well just say it right now. Um, then what I'm going to do is, you can see that's the pad right there. I'm going to go ahead and use my C-clamp. And I'm going to put this part right in there on the pad. And then that around the back side. And I'm going to go ahead and just give it like a little crank a little bit reason for doing that i never really did that ever before in my life but uh i've found recently that it is way helpful because you'll compress the piston here in the uh caliper uh just slightly you don't have to do it all the way uh like you will be here shortly but just enough to uh wear the caliper once you take the bolts out we'll just pop right out so let's go ahead and get that done and just like that caliper is removed they always tell you to uh if you can get some kind of like coat hanger or something like that and hang the caliper because it will dangle and you don't want to break your uh line but fortunately for me mine sits perfectly right here on the top of my uh leaf springs so 
I don't really have to worry about that. Um, these are the bolts that came out of it. So in case you're wondering what's holding on, what makes you stop, it's literally two bolts that look like that. Um, not exactly sure, but it's got discoloration on uh, half of this one and all of this one. I'm thinking that's because it was overheating because of uh, whenever the caliper locked up. So perhaps that's what that is. All right, well, now that we pulled that off, and in case you're wondering how that goes, it just sits right in here like so. And you just pop it right off. Like I said, if you use that C-clamp, it will just come right off nice and easy. And then, you just sit it there. Okay. Anyway, once you get, I get that off, right in here, these are the brake pads. And let's see how bad this one is. This is the worst one. Oh, well, I bent out my clip down here at the bottom. Alrighty. There we go. That's why this does not want to come off. There we go. And as you can see, we still have a little tiny bit of pad down here. Right over here, it's pretty much gone. So either I got it right at the night at the right point, or I'm right past that point. So probably right past but anyway yep rotor does not look that bad it does not feel that bad either it actually feels smooth um, but on the back side here we've got our other brake is that clip bent too no. and as you can see the back ones were actually okay but you can see the damage from uh, where they were locked on before see that angle look at that lip man that's pretty big so I mean that's like half the brake pad practically over here and it just whittles down to nothing so yeah this side was uh, you can see missing the uh, top corner there so all right well we got this hopefully at the right time so now the brakes are officially off the vehicle now now to go break out the new ones and put them in, and I'm going to uh, grab a pair of pliers to go ahead and fix this clip up here, because as you can see, it's kind of bent up. Must have been me uh, whenever I was getting that caliper off. Alrighty, let me go ahead and grab that and get that done. Alrighty, once you finagle your uh, brake pads into here, which this side was really easy, um, this side... The uh, spots where the bolts screw into, here and here, are both such a pain in the butt, and I think it's because they're so thick of a brake pad here. Let's see. Here's one of the other ones. Look how thick those pads are. That is gigantic. That might be, might be the biggest, uh, thickest uh, pads I've ever had. I don't think I've ever even seen them. So I'm hoping these are the right ones. Anyway, in the meantime, what I've done up here is, uh, as you can see, i got my C-clamp on there. And I put the old brake pad in here on the caliper and compressed the caliper with my C-clamp. The, um, the whole thing with the C-clamp, it's not a game of like crank it down, crank it down, crank it down kind of thing. And first off, you want to take the cap off of your master cylinder under the hood where you, uh, where it says, hey, wind, uh, where it says to add or, you know, uh, whatever fluid, which you should usually never have to do, um, cause it is a closed system. Anyway, take the cap off of that underneath the hood, put your C-clamp on the, uh, brake pad here, and it compresses that, uh, piston right there. And that's pretty much what it is. Uh, you have one side that pretty much grips one brake pad, and you got the piston side there that pushes on the inside brake pad, and together they just squeeze this rotor, and that's how you stop. So... All right, but anyway, yeah, the whole point of uh, when you do the C-clamp, take your time. You're not in a hurry. Um, I don't know for sure, but I, I would think that if you had any junk in your line, that would uh, probably cause a stuck caliper better than uh, if you just take your time and go slow. Um, if you go slow, it'll have a little resistance to it, but it'll go down, and it's not hard at all. You don't have to put any oomph into it and... I just did this, it took me, I don't know, two minutes or something like that, and it was, I don't know, out to about here, so two minutes to go that far, it sounds like a long time, but really it wasn't that bad, and like I said, luckily my caliper sits right here on the uh, leaf spring, 
so I'm not like awkwardly holding this in the air and all that crap. I would have just went ahead and grabbed like a coat hanger and mangled it and made a hanger for this thing and then done it in midair like that. So, all right, let me go ahead, take this C-clamp off and let's go ahead and apply the uh, caliper back to the, um, well, back to the wheel. Yeah, whatever. We're gonna put the caliper back on. Let's do that. Alrighty, as you can see, got the caliper right back on. Um, while you're doing that, one thing to consider where the bolts go in right here, these can move in and out uh, because they are made to seat right up against uh, the part I was complaining about a minute ago. And um, it's got a bushing in there, which you're actually supposed to. Let's see if we can get a kind of, you can see it's pretty much just like a metal sleeve there. And you're supposed to pull those out and inspect them from time to time. I'm not doing that right now because I will be right back on uh, this project uh, pretty soon. I bought the really cheap brakes um, mainly because I don't really care because I was looking at this rotor and it was not looking so hot. So my plan was put the cheap brakes on here and let them go ahead and wear down, buy a new rotor and change and... Everybody always asks, what kind of pads do you put on your vehicle? Ceramic, or you do the cheapies, or the mids, or the highs, or whatever. I go with the cheap ones, man. They're just brake pads. Um, if I had a bunch of money, I'd probably go with some ceramic, but I don't. So, and not only that, these were 20 bucks for the pair, both rears. Um, the next setup with, for the mediums, not even ceramic, was 35. Next ones up were like 65, and then the ceramic were like 125. So just to give you an idea on the price here, so I would much rather replace these brakes five times than uh, get ceramic ones and uh, just have to replace them once. But that being said, I do think, uh, I don't know for sure, I'm not a mechanic, but I think the ceramic ones are way better. So if I had some kind of high performance thing, then I'd be doing that. But I don't. I have an old pickup truck that I drive like a grandpa. So, except for when I get on the Hemi. Anyway, I'm going to go ahead and put these bolts back on. Pretty much we're done here, uh, almost. We have a very important thing to do uh, before you ever decide to go anywhere. I will explain that in a few minutes. Um, and I'm not going to take you on the odyssey of going to the other side and doing the exact same thing all over again. It's the exact same thing. Pull your two bolts, compress the caliper a little bit, pull your caliper, pull the brakes, put new brakes on, compress the caliper all the way down, Put the caliper back on, put your bolts back on, tighten them back down to spec. Uh, that's another good thing these manuals come in handy for. I know how to change brakes. I can do that all day long, but I don't know what the torque uh, ratio is supposed to be on these bolts. Um, I know my lug nuts are 115 foot-pounds, but uh, I am not sure. <laughs> Why do you know that? because I had to replace all these studs in the uh, in here. Never mind, it's a long story. Um, yeah, I'm the only person that really works on this vehicle. Although, this is the first vehicle in like 25 years that I've actually had to go to the mechanic, but that was ball joints, because I don't have a ball joint puller, and they were 500 bucks alone just for the puller. Anyway, long boring story. I'm gonna pop these bolts in here, and uh, then, I will go ahead and uh, we will hop in the car and I will show you what to do before you ever even move because this is the most important part of the entire video. And before I leave the back of the vehicle, these bolts right here, the ones that hold the caliper on, I forgot to mention this, uh, I believe every manual I've ever seen says to put Loctite on the threads before you put them back in. And like I said, two tiny little bolts are only... Uh, Hey, Canada, they're uh, 12 millimeter, and uh, which is, for all of the American fans, slightly lower than, well, it's 12 millimeter. Put it that way. It is 12 millimeter. <laughs> in, re in what we want to know, it's less than half inch. Um, and that's what kind of, that's the head of this little tiny bolt that's holding on this entire caliper. So probably is a good idea to go ahead and put Loctite on these guys. That being said, I don't have Loctite because every time I get it, uh, somehow the container gets left open and uh, then it dries up. So we're not going to do that. But anyway, now let's go up front. Alrighty, inside. So very first thing you want to do before you ever think about touching this gear chef knob here is you want to start your vehicle, get it idling, and then, you got to pump the brakes, because look, all the way to the floor, first one. 
Now it's regaining a little bit, a little bit. There we go. There we go. Now you could go ahead, put your foot on the brake, and go ahead and drop it into gear and go if you want. But there you go. Another little, uh, this. I know I have a trouble gauge. <laughs> Every Dodge I've ever had has an EVAP system leak, and that's what's going on right there. I'm in the process of tracking that down. So, but anyway, that was it. That was my working on my Dodge here. Changing up the brakes. Like I said, the other side is uh, the same thing. Just do it again. And make sure you pump those brakes. Most important part. Uh, quick funny story. One of the times I changed the brakes on one of my Jeep Cherokees. I had, it was a 5 speed. I had no uh, parking brake. Because um, it locked up. And we were kind of cheap. We didn't uh, go ahead and fix stuff like that. But uh, yeah, stupid thing. Um, I ended up taking it off the jack stands. It's, I never should have taken it off the jack stands. I'm not off the jack stands right now. So, just so you know. And uh, I took it off the jack stand, started it up, and it started drifting down the hill, and I ran into the other Jeep. Because <laughs> I, I kept pumping the brakes, and I didn't build up pressure yet until I hit the Jeep. Right before I hit the Jeep. So, I only, like, mangled the grill. But anyway, fun story. That's me. Changed my brakes. Having a little fun around here with me. Doing chores. So, alrighty, that's right. 139,000 miles on a new 6. That's awesome. Alrighty. Maybe I'll do some more maintenance here in the near future. So don't forget to subscribe so you can check that out. Check out all my plants on my channel. Got all kind of things growing on and updates coming out all the time. Every Monday, Tuesday, and Thursday. So every other day there might be a possibility of an extra video. So make sure you tune in, subscribe, and all that fun, happy stuff. Don't forget to do all the fun, happy media stuff down below. And I'll catch you next time. Later. Alright, one last thing here, if you use a, uh, a or, um, impact wrench here, um, I would also implore you to use a torque wrench as well, um, because, okay, yeah, I'll just go ahead and get into it, my wheel fell off my tire, why? Because I used an impact wrench and uh, I didn't check. Uh, how many foot-pounds of torque were put on of my lug nuts and uh, they were just wobbly enough they sheared right off tire came off went flying down the road it, across the road across the driveway into a yard over the hill and into the swamps so yeah there there's a little embarrassing uh, thing there all because I tightened them with my torque wrench and I didn't go back with uh, or not my, my, my impact wrench I mean I tightened them with and I didn't go back with this yes this was um, it's got four different settings on the bottom, and it was on the highest setting. Yes, it was. It still did not produce. Oh, and by the way, uh, I do what they tell you not to do. This says don't go over 90 PSI. I do 120. So, uh, in case you were wondering, maybe you didn't jack up the air. No, I did. And I know that uh, takes out the life of your impact wrench, but that's the way I roll. Um, but yeah, and... My freaking torque wrench is broken. So, luckily, I've done this so many times, I know about what it feels like, so I'm gonna get it done. So, that's the last of this video. Don't forget to check your torque. <laughs> Please, you have no clue what it feels like to be driving down the road and have your tire drive past you. <laughs> it's kind of funny when you look back, but it's not funny at the time. Especially when you see those blue lights coming up to investigate, get that sinking feeling. All right, it's enough from me. I'm out of here. Later.